Everything you know about humus is no longer true. There's new scientific thinking about this, and the bottom line is that humus does not exist in soil. Not only that, but humic substances, things like humic acid and vulvic acid and human, they also don't exist in soil. The science has done a full 180 turn on this, and it's time that gardeners get caught up. The information you think you know about humus is no longer true. I'm going to break this video down into four sections. In the first section, I'll describe the traditional view of humus. That's similar to what you think you know about humus. Then I'll discuss four key problems with this idea. Then I'll go over a new theory of humus. That's what science believes now. And I'll round it all off with some advice for gardeners. How do gardeners make use of this new information? The traditional view is the one that's taught to all gardeners. In short, it goes something like this. When organic matter like compost and manure is added to soil, it slowly decomposes through the action of microbe until it becomes humus. Humus is very stable organic material that can exist in soil for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Once formed, it just does not degrade anymore. And that is one of the reasons it's so valuable in soil. What about humic substances? When scientists started studying humus, they needed a way to get it out of the soil. So they treated soil with a strong alkaline solution. This produced a dark brown liquid, which was called humus. If you now treat this material with different acids, you get three distinct fractions, the humic substances. These are known as humic acid, vulvic acid, and humans. You can think of them as different types of humus. The first humus was extracted in 1786. That's a long time ago, and it's been studied ever since. One of the early scientists working on this was Wakesman, who was one of the first to believe in the humus theory. But as he studied it more, he changed his mind. In 1936, he published a book outlining the reasons why the idea of humus didn't make any sense. His views were mostly ignored by other soil scientists. But over the years, someone would come along and say, geez, some of his ideas really make sense. Maybe we should reevaluate our understanding of humus. What are these concerns? The first one has to do with the structure of humus. Here we have a very stable compound that makes up a significant amount of the organic matter in soil. And yet, over the last 200 years of studying this material, no one has been able to document its chemical structure. That is very odd, given the fact that hundreds of scientists have looked at humus and tried to define what it is. Now we are able to describe almost every large molecule we found in nature. And we know what the molecular structure of all these things are. Large proteins, DNA molecules, large polysaccharides. We can draw out their molecular structure. And yet almost nothing is known about the molecular structure of humus. The second problem is just as mysterious. No one has ever seen humus in soil. Even with all of the modern day equipment and all of the specialized electronic microscopes we have, no one has ever seen humus. Humus is only studied after it's extracted from soil using very alkaline solutions. This is important because strong alkali solutions cause all kinds of chemical reactions. So by the time humus is extracted, it no longer looks the way it did in soil. Imagine trying to describe a new species of fruit that you've never seen before, and all you have are the feces from an animal. That is the challenge scientists have with humus. They can't actually see the material in soil. The third issue is an even bigger problem. Think back to that compost that is added to soil. It starts out as plant and microbe cells. These are slowly broken down into smaller and smaller pieces. Cell walls are broken down to release some large proteins, which are broken into peptides, which are broken down even more into amino acids, and finally into nutrients like nitrate molecules. 
The same thing happens with all of the large molecules you start out with. They are slowly broken down into smaller and smaller molecules. Then, at the end of this process, you suddenly have huge molecules called humus. How did that happen? No one in 200 years has been able to explain how we get smaller and smaller molecules, and suddenly, to huge. Problem four has to do with the stability of humus. Every large organic molecule that exists in plants and animals can be digested by microbes, except for humus. Bacteria even digest rocks and oil. And yet humus is so stable, it takes microbes hundreds or thousands of years to digest. How can that be? None of these four problems have been resolved. And now, more and more soil scientists are starting to believe the new theory about humus. Lehman and Kleber published an elegant description of this new explanation of humus in 2015. You can read the details in my blog post, but the summary goes something like this. When organic matter is added to soil, microbes come along and digest it into smaller and smaller molecules. At some point, all of that original organic matter is completely digested. But where did it go? As the microbes digest the organic matter, they grow and they multiply. As they grow, they take the nutrients and other small molecules and build them into large molecules inside of their own cells. That nitrate molecule that started as a banana peel becomes part of a new large protein molecule inside the microbe. When the microbe dies, its body is added to the pile of organic matter, and the process starts all over again. The cycle continues over and over again. Dead organic matter becomes small molecules, which are eaten by microbes, who turn them into large molecules, only to die and end up as fresh organic matter. This process does release carbon as CO2, and the cycle would end unless there's a continual addition of new carbon. And that is where plants come in. They also use the nutrients to grow, and at the same time, they capture CO2 from the air. When they die or their leaves fall to the ground, they also become part of the starting organic material, adding new carbon that keeps the cycle going. What about humus? There is no such thing in soil. When we apply an alkali solution to the soil, it takes all of the organic matter in that soil, both living and dead, and turns it into mush. Or as some people like to call it, humush. Humus is the artificial mush that's created when we treat organic matter in the soil with this strong alkali. Humus does exist in the lab as an extracted solution, but it never exists in the actual soil. What's in soil is organic matter, both living and dead. What does all this mean to gardeners? We should start thinking of humus as being the sum of all organic matter in soil, both living and dead. This does produce a healthy soil, largely because the cycling of molecules keeps a steady stream of nutrients flowing for plants. It means that you can't buy humus. Forget all the marketing nonsense about commercial bags of humus. If you want more humus, you simply add more organic matter to the soil. It also means that things like humic acid fulvic acid and human do not exist in soil. These are sold as commercial products, but now you know that these are A, not natural in soil, and B, are not needed by soil. In fact, most commercial humic substances are made from coal. Why would you want to add this to your garden when compost and manure are much better options for adding organic matter? Do commercial humic substances work? I reviewed the science on this extensively in one of my blog posts. The bottom line is there are some positive results. But in most cases, these products add no value to the garden. A lot of these products are sold for use on lawn. Do they grow better grass? A review study from 2002 found that none of the products tested improved root growth or root numbers. The science does not support the use of these products. There is one other important point to understand. 
Now that you understand the new view of humus and how molecules are cycled around in the soil, it becomes evident that the microbes in soil are even more important than before. As these microbes die, they're adding a lot of the original organic matter. A gardener's job is to keep the microbes you have healthy and then to increase the population. The more microbes you have, the healthier your soil will become. To understand this process better, it's important to understand soil better. And one of the best ways to do that is to watch this video right here. Happy gardening.